welcome to Elizabeth Hogarth Designs. I've got so many different products and samples to show you today that I'm going to dive straight in and introduce you to Lavender and Lace from Kanban Cross. I mentioned before that they are now part of the Katie Sue Designs group um, and you're beginning to see now how the amalgamation of the two companies is bringing out a wider range of products so I'm going to talk you through the main selection first and then as we go through the video you'll see more of my samples and more of the products that are coming out in the show in the middle of May on Create and Craft so here we are with the background papers to begin with and really they are cardstock and you've got hues here of pale blue lavender and a navy blue and like an ivory cream we've got lace we've got stripes we've got diamonds and they work really well with these toppers the toppers are silver foiled and you've got plenty to work with you've got peacocks birds crowns and butterflies and even the sides can be used because they're also silver foiled i'm working at quite a fast pace because there's lots to go through initially i thought about showing you all of the products first and then all of the different samples but each one of them would have taken half an hour so along with the toppers you've got a sheet of sentiments and a sheet of larger tag sentiment and there are 48 sheets in total there's so much in this kit that i'll leave you a list of all the different elements and how much you've got of each we'll start off with a nice and simple card so this is taking one of the toppers and the background paper and the sentiment and then layering it up so that you can see the little bird in all its glory i've just added a simple lilac ribbon to bring the coloring together we then move on to one of my favorite styles of card and you've seen me make these before which is the diamond easel card but this time i've turned it on its side so that you've got a front facing card and this means that you can turn the square toppers to the point so that you've got your own diamond shape and here i've layered it up and i've cut out an additional butterfly and then completed the inside with panels of this really pretty lace effect cream and lavender background paper i like the lavender with the craft card this is another type of easel card and I've taken the three sizes of toppers so you've got the peacock throughout but you'll find when you go through the topper sheets that you've got various sizes ranging from small, medium and large. If you mount them up you've got yourself an easel card and each one of the toppers holds up the one in front of it. I've also used that side silver and white element as well so every bit of the kit can be used talking of using every part of the kit these two centimeter strips were the leftovers from the previous cards and then i've used one of the kanban dice to cut out the crown which features in the kit which is great for jubilee style cards and i've made like a, a log cabin effect and then mounted it onto white paper this still is one of my favorite cards in the collection and then if you want to make a gift set these are the boxes that i showed in the nightingale square collection so this time i've cut an aperture into it and laid it with acetate and then one of the toppers in the back and lots of sequins to create a shaker box and then i've used the very versatile flowers and leaves to frame the outside edge because you've got so much in the kit you can finish off the inside too so that's hiding the workings of the acetate and the peacock and then I've made another set of cards. There's just really so much that you can do with this collection. 
so here you've got the background papers again and the toppers as they come so you've got the peacock and the crowns the birdies and the beautiful flowers and butterflies I received a set of dies that will also be on the show and this is the fancy gift box set when you make them up they're like pillar box cards but if you think about the elements within this set you'll find that you can actually do more with this than just making up your bag but little things like these buttons and the handles and this section here really work with the items that I'm just about to show you this is a set of foiled card and you've got various designs and you've got them in blue and gold and silver so you can really take your pick they're so well foiled and shiny that it's quite hard for me to show them on camera without blinding you but so using those dies that you've just seen and the fantastic foiled cardstock i made a couple of boxes up they make really pretty gift bags so this one has got the clasp on it and you can see how the blue works with the lavender and the navy and then this one is a simple box without any handles at all but I'll show you a couple more bags with the handles later on as well as the foiling we've got padded cardstock and it comes in this pastel range of colours so you've got your pale blues, pale greens, pinks and creams so you've got like a padded quilt effect and then you've got more of a stick checkerboard style. There's also a blue in this, but I've used that in this particular sample. So this time I took the outside of the die. And rather than pushing in the sides as I did with these boxes, I left them open. And then I've added a concertina to the base. And then when you open up the bag itself... You've got yourself a notebook and again I had enough of the metallic cardstock that I could afford to cover the inside of the project as well but that's what I mean if you use the dies in a different way there's they're very very versatile set this petal shaped die is the side panel for the handbag but if you use it as a simple petal design, you can make yourself a very large sunflower style card. This again is another one of my favourites because I like to be able to use up every piece of the collection. I mentioned about the foiling. So here you can see you've got the white and silver foiling and I've used some blue oxide inks and I smooshed it onto this silver foiling and then buffed it away so that the silver came through again and then it matches perfectly with one of these butterfly toppers. It's the same sort of thing again. This time I tried the purple ink and the colour has lightened significantly but it still works and it makes a really striking card I'm also going to try it with some felt tip pens and see if the ink will stay on the glossy background I mentioned that there was a lot in this show and there is you'll also be able to buy and if you can't get onto the Create and Craft website, by all means head to KTC Designs and look on their website because they stock 12 by 12 metallic cards. So you've got a matte type silver and a it's quite a warm gold. And again, I'm sorry that the light is reflecting against it. But because it's so large and 12 by 12, it means that you can make up the bags. So here's the bag in metallic. And you can see the handles on the top this time. And I've coordinated it with some of the lavender and lace paper and toppers. And you'll also spot that I've made something else that's a little bit different here. And this is the first time for me and I'm going to show you a few more ideas using this. 
So then we've got a stepper card in the same colour hues. So this time, this gold mirror card and the navy blue works together for a more masculine make. So we've got the clasps at the top and then one of the smaller dies with the buttons. And again, you can see one of these handmade crowns. And yes, I did say handmade. And then I've coordinated it with the same matching cardstock. And you can emboss the, the uh, mirror cards, which is brilliant. Um, and then added a sentiment inside. What I thought I would do next is to try and show you some of the things that worked for me. And then if you like the idea of it, when the show comes up, you can buy yourself one of these silicone moulds. And then you can be making embellishments for your bags, boxes and cards. Because I'm working on camera, I'm using my mixed media map. But I did discover that using your glass mat really helps with the process. I haven't really used air dry clay before. I've used some from Hobbycraft before. I didn't get particularly good results. Um, but I'm willing to give this Hearty Soft a try. This is pure white. It does come in a range of other colours. And I have seen by looking on the internet that you really must take precautions to seal it up after every use. Um, and in this particular case, I'm going to put it into a sealed bag. Um, you can also put it into a Tupperware box. Anything really to keep the air from getting to the clay. So once it's out in the open, it begins to start drying out. So this has just been taken from the packet. And this is pretty pliable. This is like freshly made pastry and it seems that you're better to leave the clay for a little while so that it's not quite as uh, damp in your hands by all means go and uh, research this for yourself but I made up the first set of crowns and these are the little things that I found as I went along the way but trust me when I say that my hands are actually it's like I've got a wet wipe going over them so what I did was I took out some of the clay earlier. I probably left it a little bit too long now because I got distracted making more samples. But when I'm holding this clay, it needs a little bit more work. Um, and now it feels more like um, a piece of blue tack. Mm. By drying it out a little and not having it quite as... Uh, pliable and pullable it seemed to me that I could get the mould to come out cleanly uh, you can put corn flour in the mould I, th I think you can also put in like a vegetable wax but um, I don't have those things available and I did get half decent results in the way that I was using it I used my thumb and my middle finger to press it firmly into the mould. So you're working from the middle and outwards. And I also found that um, a circular stamping block worked as well. Then we're just going to take away the excess with our thumb, move it away from the sides. I did make a batch of these in one go. Um, I took the clay out and I used it all up and as I, as I worked with it, I felt more comfortable. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, the beauty of it is it's like paper. You can just sort of turn it over or put it back together and try again. So these edges are tidied up. I'm just going to smooth down the back. And then we'll have a go at taking it out of the mould. So when you take it out of the mould, you're easing the sides away. And you should see that the sides come away. 
and then when you turn it you try not to press on the back I think if it's dry enough it will pop out and I think probably the cornflour or starch would help with the process so for our first turning out that's not bad at all and you could see all the detail come out in the mould and then you've got like your Prince of Wales feathers at the centre and then you would take that and you would leave it to dry as a beginner I must admit I did find this lower mould trickier but I persevered and I tried to fill in these points at the end with mini sausages and I don't really know if that is the correct way of doing it I found that I wasn't able to push enough of the clay through to the top so I ended up doing it in sections by all means if you know a better way of doing it let me know in the comments below or if you too need proper help then have a look on the Katie Sue Designs Facebook page and I'm sure that you'll find some of the Katie Sue design team more than willing to help some of the projects that they make are just incredible but it's a new skill and we all have to learn somewhere and the good thing about this is if it doesn't work you can roll it up and within reason try again so I've tried to tidy up the edges um, and you can leave it within the mould for a little time and uh, it dries up a little bit more but if you gently ease it away then you should find that it will pop out and then you'll have yourself like a coronet there we go it's coming there we go so that's not bad at all the sides here need a little bit of tidying up and I found that you can do that with a sanding knife or with a pair of scissors so the next stage from here is to leave these to dry thoroughly and I left these to dry overnight and the next thing that I would do is to put the remaining clay in my box because I'm going to work with it when I'm off camera don't take out more than you need so if you're only going to make a couple of crowns only take out a small amount to keep the clay as uh, keep the life of the clay as long as possible if you've watched my channel before you'll know that I'm a big fan of making swatch books so because this was a new project for me and I hadn't really done this sort of thing before and I didn't want to make a finished article I spent some time with those small balls of clay making different samples so I let them dry overnight um, and then these are some of the items that I use so I had some paint similar to this this is Sizzix acrylic paint and I put a pea sized amount inside the glue this one was gold and I actually put some gold mica powder in there as well and this one I was really really happy with it didn't come out gold but it's a really subtle colour and on the finished samples this was one of my favourites this time I used some Nouveau drops and I actually put the colour of the Nouveau drop inside the clay this one was a blue and this one was a purple so you can see how the colours reacted with the white clay so obviously all the colours were lighter but I did find that both the Nouveau drops and the pearl drops made the 
clay a little bit too damp it didn't matter how long I left it these were the results that I got so you can see that the detail isn't as clear it's still good but when you get a result like that that's what you want every time if you can this these two samples here I used some mica powder um, I ended up tipping out too much of the silver so I simply added some water and it became like a really thick luxurious paint so you can see the results that I got and that's just pure mica covering the entire crown but that when you hone in on these small details this is the crown as it came with the clay um, and then I used the fine brush and you can see how it picks up the details and then I've added some AB gems just to finish it off so essentially all I was doing was pulling out all of my different art supplies and then seeing what I liked this one here I used a set of metallic watercolour paints my brush wasn't fine enough I used a watercolour brush so the results are good but I think I can do better but as I say we're always all learning this is where I use the colour clay um, and then this time I used some silver flakes I added a little bit of PVA glue and if you wanted a more vintage look I think that works really really well I would definitely try that one again and then here I've used the it was more of that acrylic paint because I did leave a lot out and then I used some mermaid tails just on the bottom to give it some sparkle and then this one here I used that pink clay and I used some pearl drops on the embellishments and I used some silver gilding wax and that was one of the best results. So when you look at the examples here that was with the gold gilding wax so we had the crown and this one came out really really well and then I added a touch of gold gilding wax to my fingers and then dabbed it on looking at it afterwards I probably was still too heavy handed but for a first attempt that's pretty good going and then this one here ended up being one of my favourite techniques because I found some eye zinc metal ink that I've had donkey's years and I dabbed it on with a sponge and this was the result I got. And that was one of the final crowns that I did and it ended up being one of my favourites. So again, I would definitely do that one again. And then this one here is when you use the gold and the silver gilding wax together and you can see I think that the camera just about brings up the subtlety of the gold and the silver and then last but not least this particular coronet here I painted with a silver watercolour paint and then I added a duck touch of um, like sparkly white mica powder and I think you can just about pick that one up so I've kept all of my swatches for another time um, and I would really recommend doing something like this particularly when you're trying something new the crowns that I made earlier I will try different techniques on and then when I want to come back and make something really quickly, I will use a swatch like this to give me some guidance. Before I say goodbye, here's another quick look at a few of my favourite samples made with the lavender and lace. Let me know in the comments below what you liked, what you're going to be interested in getting. If you have tried air dry clay before or if you're going to give it a go, and go on the air dry clay journey with me. I wonder what other embellishments that we could make that will coordinate with our cards. Do follow me across social media and the rest of the design team and you'll find more of their samples on the Kanban Cross Facebook group which is called For the Love of Kanban. I hope that you will enjoy the show and I look forward to welcoming you back here again soon. 
Bye-bye for now.